The Flash is like a really average roller coaster. There are a few twists, some drops, but then you end up right back where you started. And it can be a good time, but you certainly wouldn't recommend someone spend a lot of money on it or wait in a long line for it. I had an okay time, as did the other five people in the theater with me. Look, if you're watching this review so far away from it coming into theaters, it's probably because you're not gonna go see it, so you don't mind the spoilers. Let's start with a basic plot summary, then I'll kind of go into what works and what didn't. And while I was trying to summarize this movie, I really realize there is a lot going on, which is probably why it feels like such a mess. There's also the looming fact that none of it really matters in the end. So the movie opens up, we have Barry getting a very high calorie but delicious sounding breakfast. He gets a call from Alfred, there's a disaster going on. We get a funny sequence of him running over, he's saving a bunch of babies falling out of a building. Then we get a little cameo from Gal Gadot. Batman says a really stupid line that I'm gonna rant about in a minute. Barry doesn't have parents because somebody broke into his house when he was a child and stabbed his mother. His father came home right after to find her and he got arrested for the murder. While he's kind of reliving that trauma, he gets emotional, he just starts running and he runs so fast he goes back in time. Realizing that maybe he could go back and save his mother, he tells Batman of his plan and Batman tells him messing with time is a really bad idea. Understandably, he does it anyway. It's his mom. And while he's traveling back from the past, a mean figure shows up in his little time bubble thing and kicks him out of it and he lands in a different time in front of his old house. He meets his parents, his mom and dad are still home. It's all very touching, he's very excited, but then real Barry from that timeline comes home. For the sake of clarity, I'm gonna refer to them as original Barry and new Barry. I was gonna call one of them stupid Barry, but honestly, it could apply to both. Kids, kids, you're both just awful. As they get over the shock of meeting each other and they discuss what's going on, original Barry realizes his very first problem. Since his parents are still alive, he never goes into the city and takes a job that would lead him to the accident that gives him his powers. He takes new Barry to the lab where the accident happened, and while he's getting him in position, the lightning strike happens, the accident happens, but instead of giving new Barry powers, the lightning goes through both of them and the power is transferred from original Barry to new Barry, leaving original slow. Speaking of slow, the next part of the movie is horribly slow, where original Barry is dealing with not having powers and dealing with being with new Barry, who is so freaking annoying. They're doing the whole guy discovers his new powers and he's discovering the pitfalls of them thing. And then finally Zod shows up and actually is an antagonist to put some pressure on this meandering movie. Original Barry has seen this before. He knows how it's gonna play out. Superman, Wonder Woman, Cyborg, Aquaman, they're all gonna show up and save the day and stop Zod, except nobody has heard of them. <gasps> The timeline that he has messed with has resulted in a world where none of these superheroes exist. There is one hero though, and that is Batman. The Barrys seek him out, which is of course Michael Keaton, and he provides a pretty novel explanation of how time got messed up. I'm gonna go into it more in the pro section because it really was a different and neat take on time travel. They discover an extraterrestrial is being held in a Siberian prison, so they go to break him out, assuming it's Superman, but surprise, it's actually Supergirl, Kara. They rescue her, get her up to the surface. A pretty cool fight scene happens, minus the terrible CG CGI. At this point in the movie though, you've either accepted the CGI or you've left the theater. Oh, it real bad. They get back to Wayne Manor and the absolute slowest part of the movie happens with Kara not even sure she wants to help and original Barry trying to recreate the lightning and chemicals accident that gave him the powers. More on that in the con section. Finally, we get to the big battle and it is really cool, guys. They fight Zod and lose. The berries go back in time five minutes and they change a few things but they lose again. And again, and again. Original Barry is catching on. He starts to get it, but new Barry is young and brash and thinks that he just finds the right combination of moves he can force a victory. He keeps trying and keeps taking hits and he's gathering like these scraps of metal stuck into him as injuries. Finally, we get a scene showing the multiverse is starting to crash together and it contains the most insulting CGI you have ever seen. Then the guy from the beginning of the movie that kicked Barry out of the bubble shows up again. It's new Barry. Except he's covered in this metal shard stuff that he's been taking injuries for because he's been in this battle in an infinite loop trying to win it. He reveals that he is the one that kicked Barry out of the time bubble in the beginning of the movie so that way they could have two flashes and win the battle. How he even existed before Flash went back in time in order to kick him out of the bubble, it's one of those time travel story problems that just never works out well and the movie smartly doesn't even bring it up. Newberry sees that he becomes the villain in the end and sacrifices himself so original 
Barry can go back and undo saving his mom because keeping her alive is dooming the timeline. Barry undoes the whole thing, I shed a tear, and he makes one change so his dad gets caught on security camera and proves he was at the store and didn't kill his wife. In the end, Barry leaves court, his dad is exonerated, he calls Batman to tell him, hey, I did try the time travel thing, you were totally right, I messed a lot of stuff up, but it's all good now, I won't do it again. Batman is actually pulling up, but instead of Bat Fleck, it's Bat Clooney! End credits. So you see how this movie is kind of pointless? It lacks a true ending because we ended up right back where we started. It is true that our hero has learned a valuable lesson and has grown as a person, but other than that, the story is pretty much pointless and my wife and I left the theater feeling pretty underwhelmed. You know, I would be overwhelmed if you would hit the like button. God, sm no, wrong direction, no. So what works in this movie? Sadly, there's a lot more bad than good, but there are a few bright spots worth mentioning. Top of my list is the unique time explanation that Keaton gives to the Berries to explain why things are so goofy here, namely why he is so much older than Batfleck was back in the original timeline. He explains it using spaghetti and says that when you make a change in time, most people think that creates a new timeline and from the point of the change, the new timeline starts bending away. But he says going back in time actually creates a fulcrum point and he crosses the two noodles at that point, explaining that they don't share a future or a past and that fulcrum changes is the past retroactively of the new timeline. Then he gives an illustration of the multiverse, dumping a bunch of cooked spaghetti into a bowl and pointing out some of the noodles run parallel for a while before diverging, some cross, some never touch at all. Finally, he mentions that certain events are locked into the multiverse and cannot be avoided. Foreshadowing. I found this to be a really cool and new explanation of time travel and the butterfly effect. There was also some great action. The opening sequence was so goofy, I actually liked it. Barry runs to Gotham and a a bunch of babies are in the nursery ward on the top floor of a building with floor to ceiling windows and they all fall out of the window. Barry has to maneuver all of them while they're falling and maneuver obstacles and dangers away from them. He can't move them too much though because he's moving at hyperspeed and that would hurt them. At one point he has to take a break from saving the babies to smash into a falling snack machine and smash down a bunch of candy bars and chips and stuff to get calories back to fuel his super speed. But that never comes up again which was a little frustrating. It was the kind of self-aware over-the-top silliness that can really make an action movie fun. But importantly, nobody ever acknowledged how silly it was and winked into the camera. Half of us liked it. My wife did not think it was stupidly fun, just stupid. My inner 12 year old disagreed. The rescue of Supergirl was cool, showed off a lot of cool Batman stuff. When they get to the surface, there's a nice fight scene that was a little wrecked by bad CGI. Finally, the fight against Zod was really great. New Barry knows how to use his powers. Original Barry has his powers back. They're running around the battlefield. They're punching people. They're electrocuting people, generally causing havoc, looking like they're having a great time. We got more Batman, a little Kara, overall a really great sequence. This movie even has some emotional notes. After Barry realizes that he has to let his mom go to save the timeline, he goes back and undoes what he did to save her, but he takes a few minutes to talk to her one last time and it it got me, right right in the gills. It's enough to make a grown man cry. Ezra Miller is an actual criminal, but the man can act. The last plus is kind of a mixed bag and that is all the member berries sprinkled throughout the movie. We are overloaded with nostalgia in this movie. The multiverse scene was a big tribute to a lot of the flashes and Superman and Batman that have existed throughout their years, even some that never came to be, namely Nick Cage's Superman. I don't know why they couldn't get him in person. Pro he probably would have done it for free. He named his son Kal-El, but they decided to go with the CGI model and it looked horrific. Obviously, we got the Gal Gadot cameo, various Batman actors. It was pretty cool, but it can lead to a con and conveniently the con section. Nostalgia can turn south pretty quickly if it's not handled correctly. There's a very fine line between paying homage and just using old stuff like a shield. This movie basically had some of its hotter friends stand around for its dating profile picture to try to trick us into thinking that it's better than it really is. Something these studios do not understand about nostalgia is that it is supposed to evoke a feeling. It's not literally holding up an old thing and going, remember this? This was fun, right? When you do that, you inadvertently remind the audience that your movie is actually crap and movies used to be better. They're basically admitting they can never match the feeling you got watching 1989 Batman and the best they can do is just sprinkle pictures of it throughout their film. Hey guys, uh, we know Affleck and Pattinson haven't been 
great. But, uh, hey, remember Keaton and Clooney? Huh? Those were good times, right? Sometimes it doesn't even make sense. Like when Keaton says, You wanna get nuts? Let's get nuts. That doesn't fit in any way. It's just there to make you go, ah, ah, He said it, he said it. If we're just gonna have characters randomly say lines from 89, I much would have preferred someone to say, Never rub another man's rhubarb. What's in the cup should not go in the con section though, because today's tea is excellent. It is the wild sweet orange, which is herbal because I've already had enough caffeine today. It is excellent. Multiple other things were wrong with this movie, but mostly it was too much berry. Newberry was so awful. His voice was horrifically annoying. His laugh made me want to leave the theater. I despise teenage stoner characters. I understand that they needed to draw a clear line between original Barry and young immature Barry, but much like they did with Gamora in Guardians 3, they made the new character a caricature of the old one. New Barry presented other problems, like having to bring him up to speed on being a hero immediately. We spent time getting him the powers, then we spent time training him with the new powers. Against all odds, the training segment was somehow boring even though he instantly got all of it. Just terribly done. Multiple berries also made for a shot problem when they were both on screen. One of them was obviously being CGI'd in and it looked terrible. We have got to get away from CGI as a society. It's not working. You've undoubtedly seen this complaint elsewhere, but holy crap, the CGI was absolutely atrocious throughout the entire film. Barry at hyperspeed looked horrible. Supposedly that was on purpose because of the high speed, bad call. The final multiverse smashing into each other scene, 100% CGI. And my wife commented, she has seen better rendered scenes in video games that I play. Christopher Reeve looked terrible. Nick Cage looked awful. The only one that was okay was Old Flash because they hid him underneath some noise grain and black and white. The movie just looked terrible all the time. Jarringly bad. Like so bad it pulls you out of the story. There was also just too much going on in the end and none of it landed. Barry has a love interest but we don't spend any time on that. New Barry has to get powers, learn them, and save the world before sacrificing himself anyway. Kara is not Kal-El but was supposed to be his protector, however her blood is what Zod actually needs. She also isn't even sure at one point if she wants to help the race that imprisoned her. All of this is given surface level treatment and then she disappears in the middle of the Zod fight never to be heard again. They tried to introduce and cover too many things for any of it to work and so the movie just feels disjointed and honestly kind of boring. There's just so much fluff. Like original Barry tries to get his powers and recreate the accident but it doesn't take. Then Supergirl shows up at that exact moment and carries him up into the clouds to get struck by lightning. The framing of the shot and the music swell was screaming but I felt nothing but boredom at this point in the movie. Then you've got the stupid wannabe edgy politics insert in the beginning. I've contained my rage for as long as possible. After the opening action, Wonder Woman shows up and pulls Batman and a criminal up over the bridge using the lasso of truth. And it should have been a funny scene of everybody accidentally uttering some kind of embarrassing personal secret. But they just had to have Batman saying, I could reduce crime by solving poverty. Because this is Hollywood and they don't grasp the irony of living in a super expensive city with every luxury imaginable, making a 200 million plus dollar entertainment movie all while complaining rich men bad they aren't doing enough to help society anti-capitalists can be hilariously unaware some most of the time rich men get what they deserve by dying in a sub instead of using their money to help the homeless hashtag that's capitalism for you Double espresso for brexley oh that's me the biggest issue with the movie is probably why most people didn't go see it it's the end of a dead franchise and the movie it turns out is pointless in its own plot the dcu died with this movie and the gunniverse is supposed to be rising from its ashes. That remains to be seen, but the fact is this movie doesn't tie into the universe that it's 
supposed to tie into. None of these characters are coming back. The old Justice League is gone. This is pointless. It was just my wife and I, we rated it like a five or a six. There were a few fun parts, but overall it is just painfully okay. This is definitely a rental, and I would have regretted spending money to bring my whole family to see it. I don't plan on watching this one again, even if my kids rent it at some point. But I want to know what you think, not just about this movie, but the DCEU Gunniverse going forward. Did you see The Flash? Did you like it? Have you seen the trailer for the new Blue Beetle, which is the official start of the Gunniverse? How do you feel about DC's plan moving forward? I look forward to hearing your thoughts, and I appreciate you watching. I'll see you next time.